Hi, I'm Chris Haig and this is the Fiddle Channel and today we're going to play a lovely Django Reinhardt tune called Du Sambions. Du Sambiance was written in 1943 by Django Reinhardt and he recorded it not with violin uh, because at the time Stefan was in London and uh, Django was in Paris. So he used clarinet and uh, he had drums in the band at that time. So it's quite a different sound but this is a very special tune, it's a very dark mysterious sounding tune and um, it's, although not written for the fiddle, he works really nicely on the fiddle. Um, one of the best things about it is the intro, which is not something you often say about a tune. Um, it's the same phrase, which is basically this, repeated uh, eight times, um, with the chords changing continuously under it. It's a very clever piece of writing. Um, so let's just try the intro. That The phrase is, and I'm doing it all separate bows, but uh, apart from the first and the last one, the very short bows. So just hear what that sounds like with the chords changing under it. If you really wanted, you could play roots under the um, melody. Something like that. Uh, but I think um, if you've got a, a bass and a guitar going, then that's not really necessary. So into the melody, and um, let's just play the A section. So we've got one, two, three, four. repeats with a different ending, the ending being now the bowing on this um, on the uh, bar three of this section so we got the triplet and we're slurring into the next note slurring up for that note and then two ups for that repeat Then we're into the, the bridge, um, which starts on A flat minor, which is not an easy key for the fiddle. <coughs> so we're starting with the uh, fourth finger playing in A flat. Let's do that again. And uh, when I play this, I normally simplify that line. In fact, I haven't played it for ages, so I can't remember what exactly I simplify it to. But it doesn't fall naturally under the fingers. So I think I'd probably do something like this. Something that is more easy to finger. Uh, but if, you, if you're playing this with a guitarist uh, who's also playing the melody, then you really do want to do exactly the same. Um, then it goes up a semitone. So is that easy enough phrase? And then we have a, um, a kind of a chop thing. So we're doing right down the heel and uh, down bows, all down bows. If you want uh, to play it down an octave, you can do fifths, which is quite nice. So I'm playing an F with a C above it and then taking that down in semitones. Then we have which is 
pretty much the A section. <coughs> so let's play all of that with um, the backing and a slow tempo. finishes with the intro again but if uh, the, the outro finishes on so let's just do that outro one two three four and if you do that in unison with the guitar at the end that'll sound really good now let's have a look at the solo. <clears throat> so this is not an easy one to solo on, but if you want an easy approach, then go for the on the A section, go for the G minor uh, pentatonic all blues scale. So that's going to sound something like this, and we'll take it up to tempo now. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Simplify it down to a G minor uh, all the way through that, and if you can, just kind of dodge a little bit with one or two notes to get in the, the difficult uh, chords, such as the A flat seven. Um, another alternative is to follow the chords properly in a kind of a bebop way, and I've got a little arpeggio uh, solo set out here, uh, which I'll show you with the backing. That is, um, it's a lot closer to the chords, it's following the arpeggios up and down, but it's also a lot harder, it needs a lot more thought. Uh, when you're doing arpeggios like this, you certainly want to avoid going up from the root all the time. So I'm trying to go up and down, um, and I'm also trying to mix the crotchets and quavers so that it sounds more musical uh, rather than just mechanical. Um, after that, we've got the G minor and the D7, and then we've got um, that's a bit like a 2 5 1, and the, your phrase that goes through those three chords should be aiming towards the B flat. Something like that. Um, the, the, the most difficult one to make sure that you do properly is the A flat 7. And the change from that to the D7. Um, when you're looking at the chord names, you can pretty well ignore the ninths and the sixth, uh, the F9 and the C minor six. Just treat them as F and C minor, basically, and uh, and that'll sound fine. 
Now let's look at the A flat minor, and this is the really tricky bit. So, um, you can play the A flat natural minor scale, which is what that melody is based on. <laughs> So you've got four bars of that, so at least you're not interrupted by uh, anything else changing. Uh, so you could do something like... Um, and then that moves up to the much easier. Got two bars of A natural minor. And then um, on that, the next two bars... The easiest thing to do is just to play what you play in the melody itself, so just follow those notes down and that will sound fine. Uh, an alternative to the playing A-flat minor uh, in first position is to go to fourth position. So you got, you're now starting on your first finger. So the difficult bit is getting it in tune in the first place, getting your first finger in the right place. But the fact that we're starting on the first finger makes it easier to uh, to find phrases that fall under the fingers. Because basically that will be the same fingering as if you play E minor, uh, which is an easy key, obviously. Um, there's yet another alternative, and that's which quite often works if you've got a difficult key, A flat minor is the same as B major. So if you fingered that um, as if it was B major, but ended your phrase on a G sharp, then that would sound quite good. And I'm just going to show you what that sounds like. So here we go, and I'm going to start with my first finger on the B. It works pretty well. Um, just, just that bit of the B major scale is what you want. When you get lower than that, it starts getting a bit tricky. Um, so yeah, that's that. So three alternatives for the A flat minor. Start in first position with your first finger on the A flat. Go into fourth position with your first finger there, or go to B major with your first finger in first position. Uh, of course, the, all, of, all of those three alternatives are a cop-out, and ideally you will finger uh, naturally and freely and think only of the notes and not of your fingers, but uh, I certainly don't work like that. Um, so, that's the, that's the tune. I've given you the melody, the intro, um, and possibilities for the solo and the outro. So I'm going to play you out with uh, twice round um, with bits of all of that. If you would like a copy of the dots, then do subscribe and send me an email. And I do have a collection of uh, gypsy jazz tunes, uh, a lot of them written by Django Reinhardt, uh, as PDFs on my Patreon page. So you might want to check that out. Thank you for watching. I'll see you again soon.